Strap yourselves in, a lot has changed. Massive thanks to EA for giving me early access to FIFA 21. This is final build now. So whatever you see on screen, you'll get your hands on October the 1st when the game drops on EA Play. This is your go-to guide for youth academy and player growth within career mode. FIFA 21 career mode, let's go. So how about this? Entering the career mode, you've already got yourself a youth academy. You don't need to start from scratch anymore. The club will already have something in place. But before you can even see these players, we're greeted with a new screen, telling you in the very simplest of ways what the Youth Academy can bring to your team. It's incredibly overpowered if you know how to get the best out of it. So let's read this. Youth players, developing players in your own club's academy will give you the ability to shape their talents to fit the needs of your squad exactly. Development plans. Choose each player's development plan. Lay out instructions to follow, which are designed to make sure he grows into the kind of player you want him to become and sign him up. When you think the youth player is ready to step up to the next level, you can sign him up into the senior squad at your club. Yep, that is certainly the Youth Academy. So I got really lucky. When I go into my Youth Academy squad hub, I was almost laughing. The most important thing for any youth player is a number circled here and here. It tells you the maximum potential that that player can reach. This is discarding dynamic potential at this stage, an additional layer in the game the rewards players playing a lot of game time playing quite well very happy as well in the morale it could also be detrimental to your player if you're not playing him if they're very unhappy at the club and other negatives that surround football so please be aware to keep it short and sweet you really want this number to be above 90 when you're scouting a player into your youth academy the potential range will shorten over time which will sure enough drop many of the 90 plus maximum potentials into the 80 brackets but that is still a a really good player. From our first five, we had three 94 max potential players. That's a gold mine. The average of every single range is above 80. I guess this is where development plans comes into it. So let's give you guys a rundown. Development plans. All players are set a development plan. The plan gets a player to focus on improving particular skills in order to help develop his overall ability. Veteran players. As a player gets older, his skills start to decline. You can choose a plan that slows down the decline of particular skills which make the player effective during games. Position change. You can put a player on a plan to change his preferred position. For a veteran player, you can slow down the decline of any particular skills which can help him do that successfully. They might be saying there as a player gets older, wingers can become centre mids and wing backs can become centre backs. But here we go, this is the main screen. It looks daunting at first, but just don't worry. You're in good hands here. So your balance growth is just like your normal FIFA growth. It assigns points equally to every single stat. The other development plans below, Yalman, Stopper, Sweeper, Ball playing defender, defensive centre back assign that experience differently. And not only that, they can also affect stuff like work rates, skill moves and weak foot. To get the real best out of your players, the development plans will change over time. So you're concentrating on certain skills maybe every single season until they get into the prime and all of a sudden they become a very complete player. Lovely example of using the development plan to help some weak attributes. Bazan, 66 pace. I would like a little bit more. So we go box to box. That's going to increase sprint speed and acceleration far quicker than what it would be normally. We're going to scout some more youth players now. We're introduced to this screen. Youth Scouts. Improve your scouting network by hiring up to three new scouts who can help you by finding new players with future potential from all around the world. Scout skills. Each scout has specific skills. An experienced scout can find more players for you. A scout with better judgment can find you players of higher quality. And the world map sends scouts to different countries and find players who fit the profile you're looking for. The wider you spread your network, the better your chances of finding the next rising star. I don't really know what they're getting at there. Unless, on the odd chance, there's some new mechanics at play. I very much doubt that. Into the normal scouting network screen, you are greeted by a scout. And you got your first taste of the increased name pool, Elijah Bowden. Ooh! So when you're hiring more scouts, you get the same information on top about experience and judgment. We actually hired up 
a five star, five star. The more stars you get on your scouts, the better the chances are of you getting a wonder kid. Nice and easy. How about this for some information? Setting up the scouting networks, we got brand new countries and you can finally scout Wales alongside a lot of Eastern European countries and Albania in Southern Europe. From these menus, you can control what country they're gonna scout, how long the scouting mission is gonna take, and most importantly, the player type. Technically gifted will be very skillful at dribbling. You will see a lot of midfielders and attackers. Your playmakers have got good vision, mostly midfielders, as you'd expect. You think your wingers would just bring back wingers and occasionally the odd wing back? Brings back wingers and sometimes central attacking midfielders and strikers. The best attribute here, pace. Attackers actually bring back more wingers and midfielders than they do strikers, which is just bizarre. Absolutely bonkers. I hope that gets fixed eventually. It's been a problem in the game for I don't know how many years. So many years. It's been a long time since I've used this player type because of how broken it is. Apparently they grow very nicely in physicals. They've got additional composure in comparison to the other youth academy players. Physically strong Oi, overpowered. It has a good spread of positions, and as the player type suggests, yes, these players are physically strong. They've got good pace, they've got good strength. Defensive minded player type has the same problems as the attacker player type. You'd think that that would bring back more centre backs. In fact, it doesn't. Goalkeeper, easiest one of the bunch. It's gonna scout your goalkeepers. This was a very effective money spinner. Prior to FIFA 21, you'd bring back loads of goalkeepers, promote them up into your first team, and with the old training drills, upgrade them quickly and sell them on. Training has changed in this game. We'll get onto it shortly. Selling on goalkeepers for crazy amounts of profit is just not in the game anymore. Then there's any. This is just a random selection of players. The crumb of comfort here is that player types that we don't use use are possibly back in now that we have position training because we know what stats the player types are going to bring back it's just then a case of changing that player to a certain position. I think it's still useful to note that in past games, sending the scout to his home country would have a slight boost in the players that you got back, but no, that's definitely not in the game anymore. Certain countries are more effective at bringing back better players, so South America especially, but in my opinion, it's so slight, I would just go all around the world, have a wonderful variety of players, but that's my opinion. If you just want a team of Brazilian players, then yeah, go ahead. You set it all up, July the 1st, when you drop into career mode, you send your scouts out. A month later, at the beginning of August, is when your first scout reports come back. Once again, we're looking for a certain number, and that number on this screen is located here. It's the max potential of a player. Four players come back in this Albanian scout report, and one player has got a maximum potential above 90. This is the player that we should sign. There is another secret that could help you understand your Youth Academy players better. Lee Watkins, Lee Payne, both maximum potential of 94. But you look at the valuations, Lee Payne, only £200,000. Lee Watkins, £375,000. Well, they kind of play the same position and they got matching maximum potentials at 94. What's the difference? That valuation is being skewed by the overalls of the players. So you see the overall range here. Lee Watkins is a 49 to 65. Lee Payne only a 43 to 57. But that's your deep stuff. Maybe if you're like struggling to fit any more Youth Academy players in, that could be the deciding factor. I wouldn't worry about it that much. Now time to look a bit more in depth at training. To my surprise, the Youth Academy players are not involved with first team training. So maybe it is more advantageous to keep certain players that you might not be playing week in, week out in your first team in the Youth Academy. Anyway, when you have to promote them, this is how training goes. You've got fitness and you've got sharpness. The fitness is your stamina and the sharpness, it's kind of like how chemistry works in Ultimate Team. Apparently, having low sharpness, you can really feel a difference. If you've got Youth Academy players that are in your first team but not playing first team football, make sure that you are training them. If you've got Youth Academy players that are getting good minutes on the pitch, I would suggest not training them. On my calendar, it will show you rest days, training days, recovery days as well. I think I'm going to change it up. If I'm training my reserve players, I'll be giving them additional training days. We can use their remaining stamina to just train them harder. This has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you've 
found it informative, then please give it a like. If you're not subscribed around here, then do so. We do a Youth Academy career mode every single year called Youth Squad Legends. We've been doing it since like FIFA 13. It's a good laugh. It's got a great community behind it. If you've searched this video, chances are you'll absolutely love that series. That's the reason to subscribe. Hit the bell icon for mobile notifications. I will see you next time. Bye.